Bismillah Walhamdulillah Wassalatu wassalam on all the messengers of Allah My dear sisters and my brothers Welcome to part 3 of the under 9 minutes series Where I will speak about how Allah has issued all the fatwas needed in the Quran And that no human input is required at the time of the messenger, an incident took place and uh, the people went to the messenger of Allah asking him on how to deal with a particular matter about women. And as I said before, when Allah commands something in Al-Quran, that's because it's not practiced. And when Allah forbids something in Al-Quran, that's because it became widely spread. The messenger being just the messenger whose job is just to act as a means of communication between Allah and us. If you wanted to call your friends today, you use your phone because that's the means of communication. If you want to contact them in writing, you send them an email or you use WhatsApp. These are the tools. The human persona of either Musa, Jesus and any messenger of Allah including ours, Muhammad and all of his brothers, they are just the tools that Allah used to deliver to us his message, the Quran. Okay, now that much went to the messenger asking about an answer, being a messenger they thought he could speak to them from himself. But what did he do instead? He waited and waited until Allah, the owner of Islam, spoke. Muslims today, we make the messenger as an equal partner in this religion of Allah. We all read this in the Quran, yet we have two parties that are actually shaping Islam, Allah and the messenger. Now, when these people went to the messenger, they were expecting Allah not only did answer them, but he established an eternal rule. That law is this. And they request from you a fatwa about women. Say, it is Allah that issues a ruling or fatwa about them. You see, Allah took exclusive ownership of issuing fatwas for women. Not bin Baz, not bin Athaymin, no Sheikh al Islam bin Taymiyyah, no this or that or this and this. It is Allah. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and He also, وَمَا يُتْلَى عَلَيْكُمْ فِي الْكِتَابِ And He also has been, or Allah is the only one that issues explanation about what is revealed in the Quran. And this is in Surah number 4, and you can check the ayah 1 to 7. Then Allah starts answering some of the concerns of these people, and He lays them down in there. But what is the meaning of fatwa? Fatwa is, is anything where it you makes you able to provide a service or a job. A kid is, 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 is a little kid, but when he reaches the age of fatawa, or the girl, when she becomes a fatat, means they are independent and they can help. And that's why Musa in the Quran, قَالَ مُوسَى لِفَتَاهَ When Musa told his fatah, fatah is a strong man, young boy, that can carry a lot of actions. And that's where the fatwa comes from. Fatwa is a statement that somebody makes that will explain and help you lead a better life. That's what fatwa is all. And but anyhow, Allah again further on in the same surah explains about Al-Kalala when it comes to dividing inheritance. Allah again says, And they come again to you requesting a fatwa, a religious ruling. What should you tell them, Ya Muhammad? Should you tell them do this and do that? No. You tell them that it is Allah, يفتيكم في الكلالة, that it is Allah that issues rulings. So where does this issue of man issuing fatwas all the time come from? Why would Ibn Taymiyyah, who has lived 800 years ago, compose a huge, gigantic book in which he discusses many different topics and he named it Majmu' al-Fatawa, the compilations of fatwas. Just to give you an idea, this book or this, the whole work of Ibn Taymiyyah, one of his great works, is this a total of 37 big size books with a staggering total of pages 18,835 pages 
This compilation is extremely respected and unquestionably followed in the Salafi school of thought. The Wahhabis of Saudi Arabia movement by Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab built Wahhabism upon the teachings of Ibn Taymiyyah and the student of Ibn Taymiyyah, Ibn Qayyim al jawziyyah And to make it more acceptable to people, they call it a Sunnah and then they built the whole Salafism on this book and other books by this man and his students. If you were to ask any scholars, sheikh or any Muslim preacher uh, today about why do people, or why do they ask people to listen to them, what's their evidence, what well, they will always turn to Al-Quran. فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ And that is purposefully translated into ask those who possess knowledge if you do not know. Basically, these people split the Muslim world into two parts. Those who know, and the, or the answer providers, and there are the sheikh, the, the scholars, the, the, the preachers, the, all that kind of stuff, and those who do not know, and there are the general public, the seekers of answers. And the million dollars question is, has Allah truly commanded us to ask scholars and sheikhs about matters of halal and haram in our religion? In other words, has Allah commanded us in Al-Quran to always go back to these humans to ask them to tell us what it is that we should do that Allah wants us to do. Especially that he has made it clear that all what we need has already been very well clarified and explained to us in the Quran. From the foods we eat until how we interact with different people, the business we conduct, everything is explained in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa for example, for fruits, he says, وَمَا لَكُمْ أَلَّا تَأْكُلُوا مِمَّا ذُكِرَ اسْمُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ And why do you not eat of that upon which the name of Allah has been mentioned? And Allah told us that anyone, because sometimes you feel in a place you don't know if someone has said the name of Allah or not, right? Well, Allah says, if they are of the people of the book, you need not know and you should assume that they have, spo uh, they have spoken the name of Allah upon their slaughtering. But today Muslims, they have thrown away this clear ayah and have made forbidden so many things. Foods, meats that we eat in the West, they are classified haram. Please go back to my YouTube channel, Islam Pep Talk. I have made a whole talk about the meat of the people of the book. So here we see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it clear that he has extremely explained what we can eat and what we cannot. وَقَدْ فَصَّلَ لَكُمْ مَا حَرَّمَ عَلَيْكُمْ And Allah has very well explained and in details what he has forbidden upon us. And then he says, إِلَّا مَا طُرِرْتُمْ إِلَيْهِ Except that which you are compelled. If you are sick or you're going to die, whatever it is, well, there is a compulsion and you need to eat of some of the foods that Allah has prohibited. And food here means eating and drinking, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you, you can eat. And you can also go back to this ayah in Surah Al-An'am, the cattle, and that is Surah number 9. Well, this is Allah's relation and He does in it what He wants. Prophet Muhammad has no right to issue a hadith making this or that haram and making this or that halal. It's none of his business. His business is just to act as the middleman between Allah and us. And that is his job. But man stepped in and changed all that Allah stipulated in the Quran.